because I knew we were in Europe and I thought I want a bite at that as well and those two memories stick there. By the time I got to Forest and was doing the mundane stuff I'd already experienced the uh, feelings you have when you, you achieve something, you know. Thank like your first girlfriend, you know. <laughs> you don't forget her, do you? Did you ever think you were going to see this day come true, Sam? Oh, yes, yes. I very, every confidence that it would come true. Uh, I'm delighted. Uh, tell us now, have all the problems been ironed out about the gag and uh, the gag on Brian himself? Yes, yes, all been ironed out, ironed out and agreed to. Brian, what does this contract mean to you now, after all this long time? Uh, it means it's a beautiful day to sign a contract. Uh, we couldn't have picked a better one. It's for five years, and it means that we can settle down now and get on with the jobs we're being paid for. Have all the problems been sorted out as far as you're concerned? I mean, so much pressure from the club, from the Football League, to now stop you, you criticising Just people. as the chairman, have they all been sorted yeah. out? Do you want me to say no when he <laughs> said yes? Uh, of course they've been sorted out. That's why the contracts have been signed and have been signed. I certainly wish it had finished differently because it finished on an unhappy note uh, and I wish I hadn't have left because it was the best job I ever had. Uh, the people I worked with were the best people until we fell out over some silly things. Pride in my case and I think it was pride in the chairman's case at that time. Uh, I used to have a phrase and Peter Tull and I used to say to him, uh, this team's that good you could run it. And of course he got to believe it. And if he lived out of town and I think he used to get with his locals at Chapel on New Frith and they used to say to him things like, uh, now Sam, uh, uh, do you run Derby County or does Cluffy? And he'd bit occasionally, he'd say, I'm chairman of Derby County, I run Derby County. Well, of course we used to see him once a week, uh, just to say hello, a cup of coffee, he used to walk in with his big cigar and that was it. Basically he fell out with his chairman. Um, and that was all to do with the sort of things that Brian Clough was saying in the papers, the fact that he got himself a television job and came up with some very outlandish things, most of them perfectly true to my way of thinking. But Sam Longton found himself having to defend himself when he went to other clubs. He would go to Leeds or to Manchester United and they'd say, can't you control your manager? If you ever see 85% or perhaps 90% of chairmen talking, I would love a few chairmen on your programme occasionally, I believe the very sight of them brings the game into disrepute. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Because the, the very thing that they've given me a lot of stick about over the years, about talking too much and going on television too much, these are the very people who can't put two words together. I think he's made a mistake of, of, uh, of going on television. And, uh, and the biggest mistake he's made, I think, of uh, criticising and insulting personnel of the football world. But in September, the exultation turned to consternation when Clough and Taylor sensationally resigned. I was with Roy McFarland and uh, Colin Todd and I think David Nish. We was down on England duty down London and um, we, were sat, we were sat having a cup of tea in, in the lounge in the hotel and uh, someone came over and says, have you heard the news? And we says, what news? He says, uh, Brian Clough's resigned. And uh, we said, well, he's joking, you know, there's no way. It's not a fight between uh, uh, Brian and myself and Peter. Uh, it's a, a fight between, uh, shall we say, right or wrong. I don't see it as a, as a battle at all. I resigned and they've accepted it. Peter and I are now officially finished with this Derby County Football Club. Can you tell us why you what? resigned? <clears throat> Brian, can you just answer? That is the last question. Thank you very much indeed. The manager and chairman had been friends. They became enemies after Longson put out a statement claiming that Clough had demanded unreasonable pay rises and fiddled his expenses. I think it's a statement from a man who's not quite with it at the moment. I won't go so far as to say he's sick. Other people will determine that. And I think it is a statement which could destroy Derby County Football Club and it already has destroyed him. <laughs> Autumn 1973, the band played, the streets were lined. This time there was no open top bus because there was nothing to celebrate. The supporters were the centre of attention, marching on behalf of Brian Clough. The chairman, Sam Longson, far from destroyed, was still running Derby County Football Club. At least he thought he was, for at first not just the fans, but the players were against him. 
The players don't take well to the news, protest to the board and then threaten to strike. We just had a frank talk about Saturday and, and, and Saturday's got to be on the minds of the players at the moment. There's no, there's no thought at all of not playing on Saturday? No, no, the players are playing Saturday, definitely. What about this letter, Roy, that you to, to the board? Oh, sorry, I can't answer no more. Sorry. Match of the day was there. The drama at Derby started in the streets outside the ground just before the kickoff. There you can see the crowd about an hour, three quarters of an hour before the match, bored out, and there you can see the man himself arriving with a very smart haircut. He always has his hair cut on Saturday mornings, and he's going to the entrance marked players and officials. I think he was not unexpected at this point, and he goes in through the door, but then you can see at that point he stopped going into the private parts of the ground. He took his seat in alongside the director's box, only about 15 yards from the board, but outside the box itself. But here at the baseball ground, these supporters are more immediately concerned with the exit of Brian Clough and Peter Taylor and its effect on Derby County. And there in the stand is Brian Clough. And listen to the crowd. Chairman there answering the cut calls of the Derby crowd as the players prepare to kick off. Derby's players were not celebrating off the pitch. They staged their own sit-in protest at the departure of the management team and threatened to strike unless Clough and Taylor were reinstated. I mean, I was the captain at the time and I think possibly at the time we went a little bit too far. But that, that was only in a sense because we, we wanted Brian Clough to be our manager because we knew the success we'd had and we knew the success that was going to come if he was to stay there. Eventually, their anger cooled and they accepted the appointment of an erstwhile Derby favourite, the Rams' former captain, Dave Mackay. So what you're saying is that the break-up at Derby, in fact, was all over the TV appearances? No, not, not all over the no. TV appearances, but uh, uh, little other things and all that type of thing. And Taylor was actually, we were at Old Trafford, the last match before I resigned, and we beat uh, Manchester United 1-0 at Old Trafford, and I went second or third in the first division. Now, that wasn't a position where you resign from. And I'd just signed, about six weeks previous, a four-year contract, and he, Mr. Longson had given me 21,000 quid a year, which, by your standards, not a lot of cash, but by my standards in those days, a fortune. And I got myself a £90,000 contract, and I was still full of myself, and I thought, well, I can see the four years out, I'll get my house paid for, and all that type of thing, and the, the future looked rosy. But things did sour, and a guy came on the board who wanted Taylor to account for what he was doing. And it blew up at Old Trafford, actually. Really? And um, it was a bloke called Jack Kirkland, and he gave Taylor, uh, you, could, you could, in football, we take anything, as you well know, we take, a lot like mm. coppers do mm. they have to it's the mm. job to take mm. all that mm. and in turn sometimes you have to mm. take the, the rough end and uh, across the boardroom um, or the lounge or whatever it is at Old Trafford the director did that to Taylor with his bloody finger now I'm telling you nobody had done that to us since I was at school and uh, it's like calling somebody sir you know they, they get mm. sir if, mm. if they deserve sir, but sir, I'll give him sir. And he's giving it that, wiggling his finger, and I want to see you on Monday morning. And of course, Taylor came down into the dressing room and absolutely was uh, inconsolable. And he said, I've gone through, uh, not, we're not going through all that. So that was the very last thing that sparked it off. So I went to a hastily convened board meeting that particular week and I says you can stick your contract right up your jack see uh, I'm off and uh, and it went from there but that simply started a series of protests through the streets of Derby the fans wanted the board out and Clough and Taylor to remain and from all accounts the players felt much the same way they went on strike, poor lads. They went on yeah. strike and... Um, I mean, that was never going to succeed, was it? No, no, it couldn't. We, we, we slipped up, actually. We got a plane from East Midlands and we should have gone. Then we'd have mm. thrown the cat among the pigeons and we'd 
but a bit of sense prevailed and we didn't get out on the plane and uh, really you'd, you'd actually sort of got a oh yes we'd got all organized <laughs> no, so what to, to leave derby well to no take we all just just to miss the saturday's match <laughs> really yes and uh, <coughs> we had bags of meetings and bags of friends but of course sense mm. comes to the surface in more situations um as Barbara often says, it's only men who cause problems. You mm. know, if women ruled the world, there'd be no wars. Mm. We'd live in a better world, and so on, and so on, and so on. And of course, the women came and said, hey, just a minute. We've got two kids, one kid, mortgage up to here. Could it get it all sorted out? Mm. And uh, well, that's you're, what 